World of Blaze Inc. brings you a podcast based on truth, spoken boldly. Join the man on fire, John Sublon, as he takes on issues of faith and culture, always faithful, always real. This is True Faith, Real Talk, and now, the man on fire, John Sublon. Welcome to another episode of True Faith, Real Talk. I'm your host, the man on fire, John Sablon of johnsablon.com. I'd like to welcome all the listeners and the viewers back for another awesome episode. This guest that I'm bringing on today, I had on uh, early on to the show when we were just in our infancy stages back in 2018 for episode number four to talk about a little bit more of a uh, difficult topic. We were talking about the, the concept or the, the reality of divorce and annulment. Um, my guest today that I'm bringing back on, we're going to be talking about something a lot more fun and in my opinion is one of the key things that will avoid things like divorce and avoid things like uh, broken relationships and will help us grow in our compassion and understanding of our fellow brothers and sisters, especially the ones we love the most. And so I want to welcome back to this show, my dear sister in Christ, Rose Sweet. Hey, Rose. Hi, it's so good to be back, and I love what we're talking about today. So do I, so do I. So um, let's give our, our, our listeners at least a, a little bit of a recap on who is Rose Sweet. What what? Because I know you do this stuff f- full-time. You're an author, you're a speaker, and you're a lover of God. You're the woman on fire. You got all kinds of stuff going on. So can you just brief my, uh, my listeners and my viewers again of, of who Rose Sweet is? I'm the Tasmanian devil of Catholic, the Catholic world. No, I, I, I'm like you. I am on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a cradle Catholic, and um, I never formally left the faith, but I wandered off into the culture to look for fun and excitement and really hurt myself and a lot of other people. And in my struggle about who am I and how, am I, how do I get relationships right, how do I get marriage right, um, I began to seek out some basic truths about human nature. Mm-hmm. First, to understand myself and then to understand other people, and then ultimately to let that lead me even higher to understand a little bit of something of God and how we're made in His image, and, uh, and how to be holy and how to be happy. So mm-hmm. I, this, this topic is something you near and dear to me and you too, I know. You love it. Yeah, so let's, let's introduce the topic. We are going to be talking about temperaments. Um, so I'm gonna, I want to, you know, dive right into this because I think, as I said, it's, it's one of the, the key areas of self-knowledge that if we obtain this, not only will we ourselves be um, better suited to just kind of live a, a more fulfilling and peaceful, joyful life, but I think just our interaction with others because of the differences, right? We're all made uniquely and, and with our own um, strengths, weaknesses, personality types, you name it. So can we, can we just unpack it a little bit? If somebody has never heard of temperament, what, what can you uh, explain to them, bros, as far as what is a temperament? What does that mean? Temperament is a gift from God, and uh, he, he bestows it upon you at the moment of your conception. In fact, you, you actually had it in his mind before you were even conceived. But it's the way he imparts some of his goodness and his beauty to each human person. And not everybody gets the same stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you got brown eyes, I got blue eyes, right? So you and I, John, we're very similar in that we're both human, mm-hmm. but we're very different in that you're male and I'm female, and I have blue eyes and you have brown eyes. Mm-hmm. So we can understand that the gifts that you have are not all the gifts that I have and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So if I'm called to love you, and you're not like me, you know, what do I do with that? Because mm-hmm. I used to think that everything was right was me. Everybody that was like me was right. Everybody else was kind of off kilter. Mm-hmm. And I, I was humbled by, by this study. Um, but that's what it is. Our temperament is our natural predisposition to the world around us, how we see the world and how we fit into it. And it's our response to the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's our, pre- our preferences as well. So is there a difference, Rose, when we speak of temperaments with regards to personality styles or personality types? Yes, temperament is the raw material, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and l- let's say my raw material is thin, dull, brown hair. But I can give it personality with a little hair color, a little hairspray. <laughs> and so now, my st- my still my raw material is still there, right? Mm-hmm. My raw material doesn't change, but my personality can change. Mm-hmm. So the personality is the bigger 
uh, part of who we are, our experiences, our life, uh, our wisdom, our sin, our grace, it, everything that we are is personality. Mm-hmm. Temperament, the raw material that never changes. Mm-hmm. When I, uh, a lot of people will bring up personality types, right? So there's, so, you know, when people have done the Myers-Briggs study or the DISC profile, and especially in the work settings, right? People are always, it's interesting, people are always searching for how do we better interact with one another and I, I often remind people that a lot of that is based on temperaments, right? A lot of that is just kind of built upon the, and you're, you're probably going to be talking about this, the, you know, the, the many years, hundreds of years um, uh, that the ancient philosophers would study things like temperaments. So can you give the background on it before we kind of dive into the meat and potatoes of it, kind of the okay. background of temperaments? Yeah, okay, so we first know that this was coined by Hippocrates some 300 years before Jesus. Uh, he was a brilliant Greek and he was a doctor. And the story goes that he observed people at their weakest point in the hospital. You know, you don't have any facade. You're sick, you're in the bed, right? And he noticed that every, all his patients had four unique and distinct responses to life, to people, to everything. And so he, he coined those. He thought that those four different responses came from body fluids, humors. That's, you know, not ha-ha, but <laughs> body fluids. Um, and he, he's not completely wrong, uh, because look how fluids in our blood can change the way we act. Alcohol, coffee. <laughs> so there is a physiological component to it, but it's mostly psychological and emotional. Um, in other words, um, you know, when a little baby is born and mom comes into the room, little babies are going to react differently to that thing coming at them. Are they open? Are they guarded? Are they eager? You know, so it's something that we're born with. Psychologists have picked it up over the years. And, and the Myers-Briggs, actually, all, all these temperament tests that you're talking about, they're all based on this original pure four classic temperaments. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Myers-Briggs, there's too many for me. ESTJ, INFP, you know, ESPN, whatever. <laughs> it's a, and I think, in my experience, that the more nuanced you try to get with somebody, the more room for error. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. if, I, if I say, you're a man, you know I'm right. Mm-hmm. But if I say, you're a good man with a good education and a good heart, they could be wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to further categorize you. Right? Mm-hmm. So I think there's a beauty and a freedom into just pulling back with all the other complex stuff and just looking at the four. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before we get into the meat and potatoes, one, one other question I had is, what made you decide to get into the study of temperaments? Like, what was, was, what was the draw? What, you know, I know you're doing work. I mean, you obviously are offering, you know, um, different workshops, retreats, things of that nature to walk people through temperaments. You have a lot of material. Is it with, with Ascension Presents or Ascension Press that you're doing? Um, Somewhere. No, actually, uh, it's another publisher, Baker Bookhouse, but oh. then I'm, I have a book I'm working on right now on temperaments with a St. Benedict Press tan. Okay. Sorry for those other publishers that I misquoted the right no. publisher. <laughs> no. no, Ascension Press. No, I do have work with them, okay. but, but not in this area. Okay. So back in high school in the 60s, we had a humanities class, and my highly, our highly educated nuns knew that this was a classic Catholic study of temperament. St. Thomas Aquinas talks about it. St. Augustine talks about it. St. Teresa of Avila talks about it. Um, so we, she, they, she taught us the four classic temperaments, and I was enthralled. So years later, I'm at a class, and I hear somebody passing around little cassette tapes uh, back in the day. <laughs> Were you even born back then? I, I don't know. I wasn't born in the 60s, but I do know what cassette tapes are, so I have Okay, advantage. good, good. <laughs> So somebody gave me this tape of this lady, and she was a Christian speaker, Protestant speaker, and she was hilarious, and she was talking about the four temperaments, and I said, I remember that, and now as a young adult, I began to put the pieces together and say, oh, that's why my mom never got me, and that's why I get along better with dad, and that's why I like that sister better, and it all, the pieces started, so in my journey of trying to get relationships right, this became a big big part of it yeah, awesome i would i would agree 100 percent with that because i think the what it's done for my own uh, marriage and my family life alone 
um, as we were talking about before we jumped on to the to record the show is I mean we talk about it on a daily basis almost you know it's like we can that we speak in the language of the different types of temperaments so let's let's start let's start at the start what are the four basic temperaments okay so the four are two sets of opposites mm -hmm. just like north and south and east and west mm -hmm. right and everybody is a combination of two this is really important to lay this out in the beginning. We're not just one, we're not three. Two of them indicate the speed at which you respond to life. How quickly you are aroused. I don't mean sexually, but you know, what, what piques your interest? What turns your head? How quickly do you respond to people and to life? Are you fast or slow and careful? Mm -hmm. Now, which one is better? <laughs> it, it depends on the situation, and that's why, as we're talking about this, we shouldn't think that any of the four is superior to the other. That's right. Okay, so everybody is either fast, a fast responder, or a slow, more careful responder. If you're a naturally fast responder, you're probably the choleric. That's an extroverted, take charge, in your face, come on, guys, let's go, <laughs> hurry up, you idiots, you know, they, you, they can get out of control like mm -hmm. we all can. But they are fast to move, they're decisive, um, they're in charge. The complete opposite is the low-key, tender, sensitive, calm, phlegmatic. They respond just as intelligently to life, but in a much slower basis. They recognize sometimes it's not good to rush in where cholerics rush in. Come on! They take their time, and they assess first. Okay. So we need both of those, right? So everybody is one of those two. And which one are you of those two? I'm a choleric. Okay, me too. That's where we're the same. <laughs> now the other two, it, it is, are you, uh, are you long lasting or are you quick flash in the pan? When you, when you study something or you or pay attention to something, does it stick with you? Do you endure um, or is it gone in, in a flash? Mm -hmm. Are you light and airy, or are you deep and purposeful? Uh, of those, just those two things, which one fits you the most? Uh, the, the long and enduring. Yeah, long and enduring. That's the melancholy. Mm -hmm. And the opposite is the sanguine. The sanguine is flitty and flighty and, you know, the, the opposite. They're, they're just opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the sanguine is light and friendly and, and doesn't want to go too deep. And the melancholy, the natural pessimist, likes to go deep and analyze and sweat over things and, you know, just get lost in the details. Mm -hmm. And people like me, the opposite are going, why are you taking so long? That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me ask you, which one would you want to be your brain surgeon? <laughs> Somebody like me? Or the person who's like, oh, there might be more cancer still. Let's keep operating. Even though it's been 12 hours, let's keep going. We have to save this person. Mm -hmm. You know, so and I use these funny little examples, but e each of the four has their strengths and each of the four has their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But everybody's two. So you're choleric melancholy. I'm choleric sanguine. So let me, well, let me ask you this because I, I when we, we talk about this, um, I've, it's interesting because I would say, are there elements of the choleric and the melancholic that are the same, like the long-lasting, the yes. enduring piece, versus, you know, I got, I wonder, I got to go back to my assessment too when I did this because I wonder if it's, because I'm more of the extrovert. I'm not a pessimist, that's for sure. Um, I'm very optimistic. So, and as a matter of fact, if you'd ask my wife, she'd probably say, "No, you're more melancholic, sanguine," um, because. But, well, hold it, hold it. Okay, go ahead. Guide me through it. Melancholy, mm -hmm. sanguine are opposite. You cannot be a melancholy, sanguine. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm choleric. That part I'm not convinced. I'm not. Right. Uh, I'm okay. Not and the about. it's okay. the and my wife is melancholic. Right. And so we we align on a lot of things because of some of those underlying tendencies, those natural dispositions, right? So um, we're uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. Walk me okay, through. Let's, okay. You're not just one. Yeah. You're choleric, 
melancholy. She's probably melancholy, phlegmatic. Could be, yeah. Okay. So what the what you're okay, so let's look at the two the choleric and the melancholy. Okay. Okay. Choleric is a take charge, hard driving, outgoing extrovert, right? Mm -hmm. The melancholy is the deep, thoughtful, purposeful, introverted melancholy that mm -hmm. tends toward pessimism. Now remember that's just one identifier of the melancholy. If we go, oh, I'm not a pessimist or an optimist, we're, we might miss the whole thing. Right, we don't throw out the whole temperament because we're not one of the attributes. Right, yeah. so the, what is similar about your two, even though one's an extrovert, one's an introvert, mm -hmm. what is similar, they're both intense. Mm -hmm. You're outwardly intense and you're inwardly intense. Mm -hmm. The other two the sanguine and the phlegmatic are very light and sweet and soft and sometimes useless, <laughs> you know, when you're looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. No, you know, and again, I'm being sarcastic and funny or whatever, because right. that's what sanguines do. <laughs> we, we, try to, we try to bring a light touch to something that gets too heavy. Yeah, yeah. And, and appropriately, that can be good. So would you be, you'd find yourself then, Rose, either more choleric or melancholic or sanguine and phlegmatic right so you're saying you're, you'd be along those lines would you see somebody that could be a choleric and a sanguine or um, that's me okay yeah choleric and sanguine. You okay said that. so okay. imagine four squares right yeah, and yep. the top two top two are the extroverts the sanguine and the choleric mm -hmm. and then the bottom are the introverts melancholy and phlegmatic you can go around the square and be a combination of those two, those two, those two, or those two. Mm -hmm. You can't be the diagonal direct opposite. Yes, that part I, I can get. But here's the thing. My, my direct opposite is the melancholy. Deep, genius-prone, sensitive, purposeful, analytical, right? Mm -hmm. I can be those things, but I don't last very long. Mm. I can... When, let's say somebody gets hit by a car and, and they're like bleeding on the street and they're dying. Both the sensitive melancholy who's deeply concerned, I will be deeply concerned too mm -hmm. for about 10 minutes. When I see the paramedics come, everything's okay and off I go to the mall. <laughs> okay, again, I'm exaggerating, but that's the difference. Right, right. So I, I, can, I can function like all of them, but do I function naturally and does it last with me? Yeah. You know? Yeah, okay. So somebody goes and takes the assessment, mm -hmm. it does the inventory, and they find out that they're one of you know, these two uh, temperaments. What, then what? What do we do now? Okay, now, now, uh, now that you're armed with these, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but... What no, do you you're not. Okay. I, I like your pace. Let's, two colors. Come <laughs> let's on. Go, let's, let's, keep go, let's go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. I got. I figured it out. I'm. I got one of these two <laughs> labels, and now. Now what, what do I do? What do I do with this? Okay. First big warning. I learned this the hard way. We. This is not pop psychology. This mm. is very worthy of depth and consideration and study because you can take the test and not be instructed well and take and have the wrong assessment. Mm -hmm. Let's say my mother, all my life, she was very melancholy. And I, and I always got the message I had to be more like her, more melancholy. So I take the test now, and it goes, what are you? And I, So I'm checking all the melancholy stuff because that's what mom wants me to be, and that's what I've always tried to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm wrong. And now I, now I put myself in a box that it's going to like cramp me up, cramp my, my freedom and my giftedness that God gave me. Mm -hmm. So... If you are interested in doing this, get help and study. Don't don't just take the test. Mm -hmm. Once you get the answer, okay. Now you're choleric and you're and you're melancholy. Mm -hmm. What do you do, John? You recognize that as a take charge choleric, you have a tendency to butt in, uh, not notice other people, walk over their ideas, mm -hmm. because guess what? You, they're wrong. You see that they're wrong. You don't want to waste time trying to convince them. You just say, hey, you're wrong, and this is the way we got to do it. Well, that hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. And they hate you. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially if they're sanguine or phlegmatic. Yes, the soft, yes, those are the soft little sensitive ones, you know? <laughs> and so, the, but the, the, so, so you have to learn to be aware of who you're dealing with. Right. It's, because as a choleric, and I have the same fate, we are all about the task. Mm -hmm. People, they just get in the way sometimes. You know, again, I'm exaggerating for an effect. Yeah. I'm on a mission. 
get out of my way. It's for your own good. Well, that works in an emergency, but not in the rest of real life. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to learn as a choleric how to love other people in the way they need to be loved. Mm -hmm. As the sensitive, deep, loving, sacrificial, melancholy, you also have a tendency to be very critical and judgmental mm -hmm. and unforgiving and hold on to things way too long, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I just heard your confession. You didn't even have to talk. Yeah. Well, see, I'm the opposite because I let go too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm the type that, like, if somebody hurts and abuses me, mm -hmm. uh, I forgive them really fast because I just want to be friends again. And I'm stupid because I'm, now I'm friends with somebody who's an abuser, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You would see the abuser and you would, like, never forgive them and... Uh, you know, be complete. They'd have a major conversion ten years later. No, I'm not having any of it. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the it's really fun and interesting. We need each other. The opposites need each other. So y you, as a melancholy, learn to be a little lighter, a little more quick to forgive, to forget, and to move on. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the th the deep important things that you have to share, if people don't really want to hear them. You gotta just accept that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let me go back to the the kind of the inventory part too. For yeah. some, I know I made this mistake originally when I first was introduced to the temperaments. Um, it was scared to answer or answering the questions or the inventory truthfully and honestly. So sometimes, right? You you. It's like well, it's like you want to be perceived as a certain way, you want the better temperament, right? Whatever it may right. be. Um, right. And so things like, you know, uh, you enjoy the limelight, you know, you like being the center of attention. Who wants to answer yes to that, right? You kind of, even though it's true, you're like, uh, you know, but, but I, and I, and there's some that are going to be right up front with it, but I know just for the, 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 for the listeners out there, if they, if they encounter that is, do you have to answer it for this to be of any, value to you just like you said about the person who's you know answering it the way their mom is telling them right, right. um and not right. answering into what their natural inclination towards something is um i know i struggle with that at first so anytime i i am educating people on temperaments and saying oh yeah you know you should really check this out and, and learn about it and, and when you take the inventory answer it honestly because if you take it and all of a sudden you ding 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 ding, ding become the sanguine that you always wanted to be and you're really not you're really the melancholic, well, then you don't have a good understanding of yourself, and then now, how are you going to interact with others? So, that, that was just, I wanted to touch on that. Do you have okay, I, 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 no, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so true, because here's the other thing. If you are a, a, a melancholy trying to be sanguine, mm -hmm. you're going to be irritating, <laughs> because actu people sense when somebody is not being real. Mm -hmm. Authenticity, yeah. People really sense it. They know when something is flowing from you easily. If you're trying to be funny, or you're trying to be all cheerful, uh, or, you know, I, I don't know. We, 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 we intuit this. Mm -hmm. I remember when I, my, my, I was a little girl, and my sister was born, and she were both choleric. So we got along just well, and we, she was like me, but there was a little something different about her I didn't get. She was a, sometimes a little sad or crabby. She was melancholy. She was like, the, uh, like us. Mm. But most of the time, we got along great. Then came the next sister, and she was a complete introvert, double introvert, phlegmatic, melancholy, slow-moving, slow to respond, thoughtful, uber-sensitive. And here I am, like, pushing everybody around and telling jokes. <laughs> and all I, all I did was crush her. Mm. And being unaware of that, I thought something was wrong with her. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until years later I realized, oh my gosh, it was me. Mm -hmm. It was my lack of understanding and my assumption that everybody should be like me, which is, I still struggle with that every once in a while. Of course, yeah. And, and I think yeah. you bring up such a, another, another great point there because I think this is what's, where it becomes uh, crystallized for us in our relationships. And I can say, speaking from my own experience and un having a better understanding of my wife and my children, where you know I'm the color, I'm the I'm the the dominant choleric in the house. Yep. And you know I've got my my wife who's uh, melancholic, um, 
and I don't know if she, I would say she's melancholic phlegmatic. We're going to be talking about this tonight. Um, or melancholic choleric. But her dominant temperament is definitely melancholic. And then my two sons, the same way. They're a mix of melancholic and choleric. And, but they're more on the introverted side. So when you start to, to understand everybody in your home, especially those within your, 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 your circle of trust, and you see it from their perspective, because now we can exercise at the very least sympathy and then hopefully empathy for those people, then it's like, oh, I don't take things, per you know, think about it as cholerics, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't take things personal now and it's not a slight against me. You know, you don't want to go out because you're more introverted and you'd rather be a homebody and stay at home. Um, and you don't, you, you know, being around people drains you versus, you know, uh, being an extrovert, it, 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 you know, fuels you. Those are the things that I think if you don't put your finger on it and you don't understand that and you don't grow in that and work on that, it's where it becomes a point of contention and where it leads to broken relationships, divorce, you name it, right? We're, we're hurting each other without even trying right? because and, we have no idea. And it could take so little to turn it around. Yeah. You know, and, and let, me, let me say, I just learned over the years, this is really a lot more nuanced. Everything I read says that extroverts are charged up by people and energized by people, right? Mm -hmm. And introverts are like peace and quiet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let me t let's go there. Let's that's, go. That's sometimes true, but sometimes not. Mm -hmm. Okay, you and I are out there. We are. I am working with people in broken relationships. I'm working hard. I'm on the phone. I'm counseling. I'm writing. I'm doing all this stuff. I pour myself out till empty. Mm. And I don't want to be around people. Mm. When I go out and I'm around people, I'm helping and loving or, or having a good time, but I need my solitude. I need my downtime. Mm -hmm. I need to recharge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's it, so, so we have to be careful when we're too quick. And you're, it's not you, it's just everybody says this. Mm -hmm. Extroverts are charged up by people. I go, no, not all the time. That's right. Um, no, that's such a great, such a great point because I think it, it affirms me. And my other thought is, I actually, just to your point, Rose, I yeah. appreciate solitude and silence. You know, often too. you you can find I, I find myself, and to your point, you know, I can be out there and I'm, I'm you know I'm a lively personality, and I can be that person that can you know be mm -hmm. the life of the party, all of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I can be this. I can be that guy that's also in the corner, not interacting with anybody perfectly okay with that perfectly yep. okay inside my own thoughts and in my yep. own head um, yep. or at least just with my wife or my kids or a close buddy of mine or a close friend of mine um so i think that's great that you do bring that up because we're talking in general categorization right as with anything that and that's where that's where we start mm -hmm. but we have to be open to the nuances of it and my husband is a double he's completely opposite for me he's a double introvert and now how's that working out by the way but as long as he does what I tell him, fine. <laughs> no, here's the thing. But he's a salesman. He loves to chat people up. He talks. He's outgoing. He's lively. And we both work out of the home. And I, I could be here for three weeks and never go out except for groceries, right? And I'm fine because I'm about the task, <laughs> you know. He gets antsy and wants to talk to somebody. He wants to be with somebody. Mm. Now, he doesn't want to be with 50 people, but he loves to be with one or two or three people. That's where the introvert, where we can make the di di difference. Mm -hmm. They're f they're really good one on one or just a couple people. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so we ha we we have to be careful about it. So what about the f okay? Flip that. So just like you and I, as cholerics, can also right. be very um, quite okay with right. Right. being by ourselves or alone and in silence. What about the the introvert? Uh, my wife yeah. and my. Uh, they, it's not like they can't be in front of crowds or interact in a crowd or maybe not be fueled by a, a specific interaction with a bunch of people, right? Would the same thing would go for them? Yeah, and that we have to be careful about uh, extreme uh, descriptions. The introverts, like you said earlier, they're not just shy, retiring, quiet people who hide behind the woodwork, you know. <laughs> no, they're just like extroverts, mm -hmm. with this exception. Introvert, extrovert walks into a room filled with people. The extrovert moves in quickly, and mingles. The introvert looks around, checks it out, see who's there, realizes, you know, do I have everything that I need? They're analyzing, they're observing, and then when they know it's right or safe, they walk in too, and when they're mingling, you can hardly tell the difference between the two. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So the introverts are can do function just like an extrovert and usually do, but they hold back. They're not quick to rush in. They observe, they analyze, they assess first. Right? That happens right. in your family. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. I, I, I don't, I've never met your wife. I've seen her, though. But I, I think she's phlegmatic because I have never really met any two cholerics who ever really married each other. She's, she's, definitely, she's melancholic. That's, uh, right. But, you mean but on the other, can, the other temperament, you mean? Yeah. She, can, she probably can function as a choleric, be in charge, take charge, mm-hmm. move quickly, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't come as naturally to her as it does to you. She's probably, is she a mediator? Is she a loving well, mom? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, she, and she's a, she's a school psychologist and a, you know, a counselor, right? A mental, mental health right. clinician as well. So the, and I can see that in um, her and my oldest son, who is also in marriage family therapy. And my daughter, who's also a marriage family therapist, she's the sanguine of the family. So you can see the, the dynamics, but there's yeah. three of them that are in counseling. And, but yeah, my, my wife you know, and so how much of that is maternal as well, though, too, where I think of she is always that person who just she has I think she has a charism, too, of encouragement where people she can just be that that person that comes alongside of you. Listen so well, you know, OK, um, you just described the phlegmatic. <laughs> there you and go. Men, OK, men can be that way, too. Yeah, they're supporters, they're encouragers, they're the calm, quiet person in the background patting you on the back. Go, go, you can do this. Yeah. It's okay, you know. Um, and not, they're not necessarily quietly, but mm-hmm. th- they're mediators, encouragers, they're strong support. It's like every time I ever went to the hospital, I would pray for a phlegmatic nurse. <laughs> because they, they're, they're quiet, they just come in and they love you and they pat your hand and they give you your medicine and tuck you in and you know the caller it comes in and goes okay roll over time for your shot yeah, you know give me your like, arm <laughs> i know exactly <laughs> i got stuff to do and you're one of my 12 patients in the next that's hour. exactly right Let's go. that's exactly right now the other yeah, side yeah, yeah. yeah the other side of my wife is on, on the melancholic side though too because she can be just like you said um where i can see the the underlying similarities between the choleric and the melancholic right so that that enduring right, and right. lasting to those yes. elements of it. So, okay, now let's move forward. So now we've got a better understanding this. We're in our relationships. We're in our workplace, right? Because I think part of the, the value in this as well is, is even when in both my secular job, as well as in all the ministry work that I do, you best believe that in my head, I'm going, okay, what kind of temperament do I need? Just like I'm saying, hey, what kind of charisms do I need? Do this person have a charism of hospitality? Does this person have a charism of you know, leadership or um, perhaps administration, these types of things. Um, it's the same way I'm looking at temperaments, right? Uh, how, can you speak to that, Rose, as far as applying that just to your everyday life, the knowledge that you have as far as the temperaments are concerned? It's, it's huge. I remember back in the early 80s when women-owned owned businesses were getting a bunch of federal subsidies, right? Mm-hmm. Affirmative action. Mm-hmm. So I had a real estate appraisal company. So I hired a black woman, a gay woman, and a woman with short stature. You can't say midget or dwarf, you know, a little person. I, I, was, I was looking at people as objects so that I could fill my little, you know, organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I put this one doing the books in the back room. I put this one on the front office on the phone dealing with clients. I didn't have any understanding of their wholeness of their human humanity and their or their temperament and they were all miserable (laughs) (laughs) and thank god that was when i got that cassette tape and started learning about the temperaments and i took everybody in my company up to hear this florence littower woman who was talking on the tapes i went to meet her and we and we worked together for the next 30 years uh uh but i i had the the one in the back room I took her out and put in the front. She was great with people. The one who was up at the front with the horrible clients, she was an introvert and she didn't like conflict and she she shut down. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I had to do this major thing, and it, it, it's marriage, family, parenting, work. It's everywhere. Everywhere you have people, you have personalities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we don't understand that, we're not going to know how to speak their language and love them. Mm-hmm. Do and you that's. Do you That's see it in the work that you do, especially with walking with a lot of couples? You know, you're 
<laughs> you're in the business of trying to save marriages, right? And rec- help help people reconcile and with forgiveness and deal with the the, the tragedy of divorce and whatnot. Where do you I, see te- I, where do you see temperaments come into play here? It's it's everywhere, mm-hmm. and you know that you you know this. Okay, so let's say I have a woman in my office, and I know that she's a a, a, a melancholy. She's deeply sensitive, and she's been wounded over and over, and she can't forgive. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I tell her right away. I said, I know that you really are sensitive and loving and thoughtful and deep. I'm like memorizing this stuff that I've written in the book, right? <laughs> but I also know that you have a big problem with forgiveness of everybody. You really struggle with that. And as soon as I say those things to her, she goes, she's like, I, Rose Sweet gets me. Mm-hmm. And I go, okay, so now that I've established some trust, you know, I don't know all about her, but I know that part about her. Mm-hmm. I say, let me help you. You don't have to rush into this. Right? There's a key word. Mm-hmm. You and I like to rush. <laughs> they don't. Mm-hmm. You don't have to rush, but you need to think about it, and you need to make it a priority. Mm-hmm. And then I lower my voice. I'm here to help you. If I was talking to you, John, I go, look, man, you got to forgive. You know what? You're being stubborn. You're being a jerk. Just do it. <laughs> my tone of voice and my words would be different with you. And guess what? I would, speaking your language, oh, you yeah. would appreciate that. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. You don't want me to come over and go, Hi, John. I know you're a nice guy. And Jesus says you need to forgive. You would just turn off, right? Oh, yeah. There's a reason why, yeah. you know, I get a lot. Me and Deacon Harold are our brothers and oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the Jesse Romero's of the world. We just smack each other around with Jesus two by fours, you know? Right. And, <laughs> and you know what? You guys need to do that for each other, but you don't need to do that to the rest of the population. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm right there with you. So, okay, okay, so, all right, how do we help our our brothers and sisters out there that are interested in finding out more about temperaments, uh, getting getting more education on it, uh, seeking out the resources that you have, perhaps, okay, now they're ready to to take the inventory. Hey, there we go. I have a book with, it's called Personality Plus at Work, and I wrote it with Florence Littower, the woman that, we could talk about her later. Anyway, there's... Uh, definitions there's inventory in here there's lots of charts it's you know what are the deepest emotional needs of the four Mm -hmm. how do they communicate best how do they parent you know in the workplace so you can go to my website rosesweet.com to get that book and then of course i'm writing another one right now i think it's going to be even better uh and that will probably be out later this year and that's the one with tan books can you give any can you give any teasers on what it's going to be about? It's it's going to be about the four, but uh, um, what I'm going to do is load it up with lots of funny and touching stories that, that give flesh to it. Because, Good. you know, if somebody's listening to us today, mm-hmm. uh, and, and if this is all new, they're going, what? Phlegmatic, right. melancholy. It's like, it doesn't make sense, and they're going to go, forget it. Right. But if you, if you read a story, and you can relate to it, then you go, I get it. So that's what I'm going to do. Put lots. No, of, that's that's great because I think that's what we need to do. Because how do we see this translated into everyday life? You know, um, which I think to your that's what's people that's what's going to draw people in and help them understand it better with real life examples. Because um, I can think of you know numerous ones in my own family life. Just no, <laughs> just the everyday communication. Let me uh, let me ask you. How did you first learn about the temperaments? You know, I can't. Um, how did we get turned on? I don't know what it was, but we, and we talked about this offline when um, I was introduced to it in whatever, I can't remember how, but I know it was through the temperaments God gave you from Art mm. Lorraine Bennett. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's been our primary method of interacting with understanding the temperaments and what they wrote on their books. So the temperaments God gave you, the temperaments God gave your children and you know, all of that. Um, so that was our first encounter with it. And so I was really excited when I saw that you had work that's being done in this area um, because, you know, that was, um, it's from a different, it's obviously reaching from the same studies and the same um, historical uh, understanding of it from the ancient philosophers. But the, you know, for me, it was just like, I want some more updated information to kind of continue to unpack it because you do the inventory, you know, you get a better understanding, but then you constantly, I think you constantly need to kind of improve and work and grow better in examples and, just tools and application, right? Because we encounter people 
in our ministry, in our everyday life, just at work. And, you know, you see people struggling in the relationships because they lack that self-knowledge and self-awareness and that understanding of other. So um, I am I'm excited to, uh, you know, get a hold of your resources to be able to unpack it a little bit more and learn about it more. But yeah, but it was through Art and Lorraine Bennett originally. Yeah, what, what Art, I know Art and Lorraine, um, and they, they're familiar with Florence Littower's work as well. One of the things that I do is I take it a little further and talk about how it can be misunderstand, misunderstood and misused. Mm. Uh, I talk about the negatives of understanding this and trying to, to put it into your life and, and the mistakes that we can make. Oh, um, yeah, uh, it's it's really it's really nuanced. The deeper you get into it, the more beautiful it becomes, mm-hmm. and the more powerful a tool it becomes mm-hmm. for you. I guess you know you could go to a cooking store and get one of those little squeezy tubes with frosting and learn how to decorate a cake, mm-hmm. and, and it looks good. Mm-hmm. But then you go to like a master cooking school and you learn how to make those little roses and do all these little funky little things. That's what I, I want to do. I love this so much, and it's it's really powerful, and there's a lot of depth to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, and I go there. I go deep into this. Okay, so you have the Personality Plus Work book. Mm-hmm. You have the other book in the works, which is going yep. to give us some real practical examples. Any other tools, resources, whether you develop them or otherwise we can point the listeners or viewers to? Well, I, one of the things that I do is give parish retreats on this. I do one-day retreats or weekend retreats, um, which is really fun to get the whole parish involved and get everybody taking the inventory and sharing their stories. It's, I've done it at uh, some parishes in the last couple of years, and they, they, they really love it. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, again, yeah. that's at rosesweet.com, and I'll go ahead and put that in both the, uh, okay. the episode show notes, and I'll even throw it up there uh, on, the, on the screen for the viewers to see. Um, what else can we share about that, the wonderful work of temperaments, Rose? Anything, any parting words of wisdom? Hmm. Well, it's not pop psychology, I said that, mm-hmm. but it gives you a better understanding of yourself, of other people. It also will help you know your primary strengths, mm-hmm. which is your re- a reflection of God himself. And your weaknesses, you know, you're, we're called to holiness, so all of us need to know where our biggest sin nature lies, and this will help reveal that. And, you know, we were talking about earlier, like, well, we don't want to do that. <laughs> no, we do. If we want to be the most beautiful that God made us, the strongest, the holiest, this is a really powerful tool. And the saints who came before us know that. Amen. You know, I think that's a, a, a very, very uh, good way to kind of emphasize the the, the fact that I think encouraging everybody to go after this and, and to, to learn it, to understand it, to get these resources, to get Rose's uh, resources, because I think that um, I think the catechism puts it in paragraph 357 when it talks about self-knowledge leads to self-possession, which leads to freely giving of oneself and then freely entering into communion with other persons. And it, it well, everything starts growing and holiness starts with self-knowledge. And it's going to take an act of humility on our part. But I would say for me personally, speaking with for what I've been through with the temperament, it's actually been super liberating because me too, uh, you know, because it's, it's not that I intend or even liberating for the re- people around us. It's not that we intend to hurt your feelings. It's not that we intend to run right through you or to ignore you or dismiss you. Matter of fact, my wife always, she can always start like, she goes, now my choleric husband, listen to me as I explain this because she knows I'm, you know, before she finishes the sentence, I'm out the door or, often ordering stuff on Amazon because she said, hey, I was thinking about getting, right? And then boom, I'm off. Um, So it's just very liberating because I myself know the natural tendencies, my natural predispositions, the fact that I am quick to react. So I practice reticence. I practice patience. I practice the things that are opposite of those natural inclinations that that during a specific moment may not be the right response. In other moments, like you said at the beginning, it, it may be okay to be quick reacting. Other times, right. not so much. Right, right, right. And so I would just encourage the listeners. For me, it's been very liberating. And for those around me, um, because I feel like I have a better grasp of myself. And therefore, uh, I'm more self-possessed, you know? I love that. that. And that your wife, in one word, can say, okay, my choleric husband. Mm-hmm. That triggers you to go back to a place mm-hmm. of not 
of, of where she needs you to be. Oh yeah. And she doesn't ha- she doesn't have to say it. She just says choleric, and you right. go, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean the language that we use in our home, it's it's pretty neat because it's 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 safe, right? And we've worked, yeah. we've learned the hard way, unfortunately. But we'll yeah. say that, and I'll say, all right, my melancholy. You know, my son and I just did <laughs> my my son and I just did a confirmation retreat this last weekend. You know, it's like f- over four hundred people there, and he gave his first real talk to this big mm. group of kids and of course mm. he's a melancholic and he, he's just being super critical and negative mm. and so mm-hmm. i'm having this conversation with him because i understand because his mom's that way i have done mm-hmm. the, did the work in there mm-hmm. and have grown in, in some knowledge of temperaments and so it's a way to even help lift each other up and help it, them acknowledge that you know totally that's is. your natural way you're going to be tearing yourself down so let's pull ourselves back up let's let's find the truth in all of this so I just, you know, I, I can't emphasize it enough. I, I think this episode was obviously long overdue. I've, um, you know, was excited to get you on, Rose, to, to talk about something I think we both believe in and, and live it and um, believe that it's definitely a, a, an excellent way for people to improve in their own knowledge of self and improve their relationships. Okay, here's a challenge for you. And okay. you and I like that word challenge, we right? We do. We do. Okay. Why don't you get some input from your listeners, what they didn't like, what they didn't understand, and what they want to hear more of. Okay. You got it. And let's plan down the road another session, and we'll hit those questions. You got it. Yeah, I would love that. Let's do it. Okay, so for the listeners out there that are listening to this um, and the viewers, and I'll be sending some stuff out via social media once this gets posted, you know, to give it a real listen, to, to, uh, to come up with a list of questions. Maybe you're confused still. Right. And you don't get it. Or maybe you're saying, you know what? I don't agree with you guys on this one. And I don't buy what Rose is selling. Um, and bring it on. <laughs> bring baby, it on. Bring the it two colorics are going to get together <laughs> and we're going to come back and we're going to give you the answer that you're looking for because we're no. always right. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're going to say it very. That's we right. are always right. <laughs> don't say that That's to them. Right. Exactly. We're going to be very kind. Yeah. We'll right? get you to understand how we're always right in the way that you need yeah. to understand it, right? I mean, that's right. right just yeah. do what we tell you, and everything's going to be fine. Every, I know. Just get out of the way. No, <laughs> no. But again, Rose, my dear sister, thank you so much for coming on. Um, for you know, just allowing us to kind of unpack this to some degree. I know you give full day retreats on this stuff, and yeah. Um, so this is not um the the only way to 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 try to unpack it. There's a lot to that. Um, and yeah. And but I would say I, I highly encourage all the listeners to go to rosesweet dot com. Check out our resources. We'll look for our upcoming book in the next in the upcoming year. Um, and then also for those of you that are event coordinators, and maybe you you have an interest to bring Rose out to your parish, um, bring her to your community. She's out in SoCal, right? You're in Orange County. Yeah, Palm Desert. Palm Desert. My, right. My, yeah. Down, all the way down to Palm Desert. Bring her up. Yeah. No, bring her up north somewhere where I'm at where it's a little bit cooler <laughs> um, and uh, or bring her to wherever you are across uh, the country or internationally to where Rose can kind of help you and your fellow community um, grow in your self-knowledge and therefore improve um, your relationships and, and just your, your overall awareness of self. So my dear Thanks, sister, John. Rose, thank you so much for um, all that you do for, you know, God and the Lord's vineyard and people. I know the work that you do with couples um is you know not uh an easy task it's Um, tough it's It's tough it's tough but you know what you're doing the same thing and i'm so i I just i love you (laughs) appreciate i I love i love you too sister i know you're doing some good work out there so let's keep up the good fight and um and may god continue to bless you and keep you and let his face shine upon you and your family and that awesome husband of yours who has to put up with your color itself my heart (laughs) my heart goes out to him and uh (laughs) okay i know my heart goes out to him too (laughs) god bless you john god bless we'll talk to you later okay bye true faith real talk don't forget to like and subscribe to the show continue the conversation online visit johnsublon.com until next time get holy or die trying godspeed